Okay, it is a great pleasure to have the first speaker of this uh, new FCT project based at the Group of Mathematical Physics in Lisbon University. The project name is uh, Irregular Connection on Algebraic Curves and Quantum Field Theory. Uh, in other words, we, it is about uh, uh, linear ODEs with analytic coefficients. And some properties of these uh, ODEs encodes uh, some physical observable in some quantum field theory. Um, and this is the first seminar in, in this project by Gabriele Rembado from Eigenosche Technische Hochschule in Zurich. He is a postdoc in Zurich and he was a PhD student of Philip Bolch in Paris Sur uh, until a few months ago. And of uh, Jürgen Andersen in the Center of Quantum Geometry in Aarhus in, in Denmark. Perfect. So, uh, yeah, thank you. I thank Davide for, uh, for the invitation and for this uh, introduction. Uh, right, so, uh, quant uh, the title is Quantization of Isomonogramy Systems. So, I will define what an isomonogramy system is in a particular case. And then I will describe a procedure to quantize them. It's going to be what, what people call deformation quantization. And the result is some interesting um, flat connection on some vector bundle, which has been, uh, which, which, are, which have already found use in uh, quantum field theory. And then some new example for which there is no known model to which uh, they could be attached. And this talk is going to have two parts. So first I'm going to review the basic example, which is the Schlesinger system uh, and its quantization, which is the Knishnik zamological connection. This is hopefully correct, but for now on I'm just going to write the definition. And then the second part, so this is basically the core, just to make you understand what is the general procedure we want to generalize, and then I pass to uh, generalizations. There are going to be generalizations which are already known and established, I mean, before this project, and then there is a new extension, which is what uh, the thesis was about, and I would like to maybe add with the statement of the result, and first time a few ideas for, for the proof, okay? And that's it. So let's start immediately uh, with some setup. So I'll take integers m and n, uh, consider the surface, the Riemann surface sigma, which is just the Riemann sphere, set g to be gln, g gothic, I mean the algebra. And then uh, let V be the trivial rank N holomorphic vector bundle over the sphere. And now I'm going to uh, define a connection in this trivial vector bundle, and then I'm going to consider isomorphic deformations of such connection. So define the connection. Nabla. Since this bundle is trivial, I can give it by a global uh, G-valued form. And there it is, where um, Z is a local coordinate on sigma which provides the usual identification of the sphere with the complex plane plus infinity. Then you take this Ri, which are matrices, so they live in the Lie algebra, and then the Ti, which are positions of poles in C, okay? So assume for simplicity that the sum of these matrices which has the residues is zero. This implies that there is no pole at infinity. Okay, this is 
what I am uh, studying right now. It's a logarithmic connection on this trivial vector bundle defined by positions of simple poles and residues. Now I consider a Fuchsian system, which is by definition a horizontal section for this connection. So a Fuchsian system on the sphere is um, a, this is like uh, uh, well, it's the system. Nabla psi equals zero uh, for a local section psi of V. Okay. So this is just let's try breaking the chalk. This is just an intrinsic geometrical way for describing a system of first order linear ODEs, as David said in the introduction, with a um, um, coefficients which are holomorphic uh, uh, outside the poles. Okay, and now let me recall you that these solutions, when they exist, they are multivalued, there is monodromy. So this means that if I have a solution and I analytically continue it around the pole, this solution is going to change according to some transformation, which only depends on the homotopy class of the path. So, recall. Uh, I pick uh, a basis of fundamental solution of the Fuchsian system, then analytic continuation around, say, the boundary d, d i of a small disk containing the pole t i transforms this vector by right multiplication by a certain invertible matrix, which is going to be the monodromy action on the space of solution. So analytic continuation around the i, where, as I said, the i is a disk, uh, for instance, center at the i uh, transforms the vector psi 1 up to psi n into something different. So it transforms it as psi 1 psi n goes to psi 1 psi n. Uh, let, me, let me just, well, I mean, it's not very important, let's write it on the left, where this is now an element in G, which is GLN, the group, okay? And I uh, also recall that since NABLA restricted to the curve minus the reunion of this disk is a holomorphic connection, then in particular this restriction is flat, a holomorphic connection would have a curvature which is of type 2,0 and there are no 2,0 forms on a Riemann surface, so this is a flat connection and thus this analytic continuation does not depend <coughs> on the path we've chosen, up, but it, I mean it only depends on the path up to a homotopy. And hence uh, there is a map which I call nu of nabla, defined from the fundamental group of the sphere with what we the fold removed, plus the choice of a starting point, which is not very important here, in G. And now I define the monodromy data of the connection as being this uh, representation up to conjugation. Okay? of the conjugate class of this map is the monodromy data. Of map. 
Okay, so this is important because if I try to uh, look for solutions to a Fuchsian system, I would like to know how solutions transform when I move around the pole. And now there is the natural question of try to deform the monomorphic connection I started with in such a way that the monodromic data does not vary. And I will call this an isomonodromic deformation, uh, which makes the most sense. Okay. So, so if, as I said, uh, right now I am free to move the position of the poles inside this disk. So right now there is a map. from uh, the space g to the power m, which is the space containing the residues, times the products of the disks into this space of representations. Uh, and now I can forgot about the base point because I'm taking conjugation. And I claim that this map, this is a fact which I'm not going to prove, this map extends not just to varying the, po varying the positions of the poles inside the disk, but to the whole space of the configuration of points to the sphere. So this extends to a map uh, again new into this form. Let me just write it quickly. This is thanks to, to a map defined on g to the power m times b, where b is the space of configuration of m tuples of points, order m tuples of points in the complex plane. So for every choice of poles, I get such a map, and now I am free to ask. Can I move the residues inside here and the balls inside here, or rather inside here, sorry, such that the representation, the modern representation stays fixed, okay? That's the question we ask, and the solution has been known since, uh, I mean, more than a century right now, whereas the quantization of this system dates for, I mean, it's like 30 years ago, so this is what we want to generalize, okay? So, so what is the, the dimension of the domain and the one has to do a little, so right, this is the Lie algebra, it's f times m, and this eventually is just an open set inside c to the power n, so it still has dimension m, and then you have to compute the dimension of the Betty model, I mean of the modular space representation of the fundamental group. So here you do like the GAT quotient, right? Mm -hmm. So these are maps from here to there, so they are given by you know, you take the generator, you have n tuples of matrices satisfying some relation, and then you compute the, the dimension of this. Yes, so this is sent to map defined there, good perfect. And now we have the question. The question is, can we vary? Are this, uh, okay, sorry, it's not important. Can we vary the position of the poles and the residues so that monodromy data stay fixed. And the answer to this question, as I was, I mean, as I said before, is yes. So the answer is this theorem, due to Schlesinger. This was like a first paper in, uh, I think, uh, 1905 and then again 1912, so maybe that's why they hold me because I don't want. So this is really, I mean, this has been known for a while. This is the statement about the isomer Romy deformation of Fuchsian systems on the sphere, okay? So, if Ri satisfy the following system, Then one has uh, uh, isomorphic deformations. So let me write for you the Schlesinger system.
the Schlesinger system reads, I write it in differential form. You can write it like this. That's the Schlesinger system. So this means that if I vary locally this force, then I get some different, this time it's non-linear differential equation for the residues. If they're satisfied, I will have uh, monodromy data which are fixed along the deformation. Okay, and now I interpret this system geometrically by deriving some Hamiltonian system, time-dependent Hamiltonian system which, so whose flow gives me this differential equation, and then I quantize the system. That's the whole story. So geometrically, this system here defines a connection in the Poisson vibration g to the power n times d over b, by a connection here, I mean a connection in the vibration sense, okay? It's a Harrisman connection, uh, sometimes people call it uh, like this. A connection in this Poisson vibration whose leaves, by definition, are families of isomorphic deformations, okay? So this is by definition integrable because I'm giving the connection by giving you leaves immediately, okay? This is the first statement. This is what people call the isomorphic connection. And then, moreover, uh, there is a Hamiltonian interpretation, as I said, meaning that there is some Hamiltonian system on this space taking values in C, such that computing the flow is the same as giving these equations. So, moreover. Ah, sorry. Maybe you didn't ask it because you understood this, but I will say this. Why is this Poisson? Sorry. This is the Lie algebra of the general inner group, uh, it has an invariant, uh, you know, non-degenerate product defined by taking the trace, so this is isomorphic canonically to its dual. And the dual of the algebra is Poisson. So I'm using the Liberezzi Poisson bracket on, on G. Let me maybe write this so, uh, remark. G is isomorphic to G star via the non-degenerate invariant pairing defined by taking the trace. Okay. Which is not the killing form, okay? The killing form is degenerate on this algebra because it's not semi-simple. But no nonetheless, there is this pair. Okay? <coughs> Okay, right, so this is Poisson, and then, as I was saying, moreover, uh, there exists Hamiltonians uh, Hi from g to the power n times b taking values into c. Again, think of this as time dependent Hamiltonians on this space. Okay, this is a Poisson manifold. For each time here, we have an Hamiltonian from the Poisson manifold to C. Okay, so this is a time dependent classical Hamiltonian system. Such that uh, this system here is equivalent to writing the following. Okay? Saying that the Schlesinger system is equivalent to a Hamiltonian system means that computing the flow of this. Uh, um, of the Hamiltonian system gives you the same equation. This is an abuse of notation because Ri is not a function on g to the power n. To be really precise, I should say that this is true for each component of the residue matrix. Okay? The components of the residues are functions on this space, and then I compute the Poisson bracket. Okay. And now we quantize it. Just 
dynamical and mechanics, the Pascal derivative of Ai. Yes. Plus or minus uh, a Pascal Poisson is zero. Uh, it, right, so I'm saying uh, what is the time evolution, basically I'm, I'm, I'm saying what is the time evolution of this observable yeah. and I say yes exactly in Hamiltonian mechanics the interpretation as you say is that the Hamiltonian evolution is given by saying that the time evolution of the observable is given by the Poisson bracket with the Hamiltonian, exactly. So this is like uh, the Hamilton viewpoint in uh, classical mechanics in which the state is fixed and the observable varies. Yeah. Exactly, that's, that, that's what I'm doing. Yes. Can you recall the definition of the Poisson bracket on the G star? Yes, right. Let's see if I can. So yes, uh, G star, I have to give it something totally intrinsic. So the first way you see it, it's like, let, let's try. So Poisson bracket. On G star. What does this mean? This means that if I give you two functions on G star, I have to give you another function defined of those. So if F G stay here, let's start by assuming that they are linear, right? And if they are linear function here, they live in the B dual, which is uh, G again. This is canonical. And now I have to compute Fg at a point which is in G star, right? Let me call, normally people call it Xi just to make it clear that it is somewhere else. And now I do the, the only thing that makes sense. This is in G star, these two are in G, so I consider the canonical pairing of this against the commutator of the two. And I claim that this is a Poisson bracket. And of course, there, is, there are a few things to, to check here. But basically, this is the only definition that makes sense. And in some way, I mean, the Jacobi identity and so on follows from this here. And yeah, you also have to show Leibniz. Again, I define this on linear functions. Then, since it's a Poisson bracket, you can always decompose it. And there you go. Okay, so if you want, this is um, the Poisson bracket on sim g, if you want, because polynomial function on G star, as we said, they are uh, in the symmetric algebra of G, and here you go, I gave you some uh, Poisson bracket on there. This is what I will quantize. Okay? Right. Then this is, I think, the Liberez in Poisson bracket. Okay. I mean, the name is that, but it's not very important. <coughs> So, right, so uh, quantization. So, this is a huge chapter, okay? Quantization, geometric quantization, deformation quantization, op algebra quantization, of it's, I mean, this doesn't mean anything like this. So, I mean deformation quantization, and I mean a very particular type of deformation quantization, which is sometimes called the PBW quantization. which is one of the most, I mean, it's, it's totally algebraic. There is no geometry, no analysis in there. It's just a canonical quantization that takes a symmetric algebra to the universal enveloping algebra via the poincare birkhoff bit theorem. That's why you call it like this. So it's just that uh, one has an isomorphism, the graded algebra of the universal enveloping algebra of G is isomorphic to the symmetric algebra of G, which, as we discussed there, I identify with the space of polynomial function on G star. So this is the algebra of function on my Poisson manifold. Actually, it, 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 will, it will be G to the power N, but it's not, uh, I mean, it, it doesn't change much, okay? I can take G to the power N everywhere, okay? So this is the algebra of classical function of, of, of observable on my Poisson um, manifold. It has a Poisson bracket, there it is. And this is, however, a non-commutative associative algebra whose associated grade is equal to this. And moreover, the commutator here goes to the Poisson bracket there. So that's why you call it a quantization. Okay? So the one has an isomorphism of, and that's important, of uh, commutative 
gravy poisson algebra so this is not a, I said I said one more the fact that this is an isomorphism of all this structure means that the commutator the form the poisson bracket there and this is non-commutative you should think of it as some algebra of you know self-adjoint operator on some Hilbert space, if you take some, some representation. There are no Hilbert spaces right now, but still one can take modules and think of it that way. And this is the algebra function, which is commutative, and it has the post number. There will be some kind of probability of interpretation of this computation? Not that I, I am, I, I write, so probably there are. Though I, I, I don't know much about this, sure, yeah. Uh, this is just the classical, you know, uh, like the linear algebraic formalism, which tells you that the phase space of the quantum theory, which is by definition the space whose points parameterizes pure states, so there's no statistical mechanics, it's uh, just uh, ordinary mechanics, they are rays in some Hilbert space. So this is what I'm enforcing. I'm enforcing this viewpoint. Then one can forget about the Hilbert space and just take the algebra out of, of observables. But right now, yeah, there is no mixed state, statistical, mega. one should go to, you know, um, how they call, um, what is a mixed state in quantum mechanics, the density matrix, there you go, but we do not do this here, we do not do, it's just pure state. Yes, are there, are there questions? Sorry, this is the associated gradient of this algebra. Do you want me to spell this out a little bit more? No, 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 I, I you tell, okay. okay, right. But let me just, in, in brief, I mean, this is a filtered algebra. Every filtered associative algebra is an associated gradient. And if the associated gradient is commutative, then it inherits a canonical Poisson bracket. And I'm saying that this natural Poisson bracket on the graded algebra coincides with this one. That's why I call it a quantization. Totally algebraic, uh, as I told you. Okay, good. So now, uh, so one is this, so uh, thus UG is what is called a filter quantization of same G, which is a particular case of deformation quantization. Okay, uh, moreover, there is a natural quantization map. So there is a map which I will call Q, maybe PBW, just to be clear that this is the PBW quantization, which is basically a section of the map taking the associated gradient. So this is a map such that if I have an element here, I take it's associate, and then I take the same classical limit, I go back where I started. So that's why I call it a quantization map. And thus, we consider the connection obtained by quantizing the classical Hamiltonians directly, okay? We consider Nabla hat equal d minus the sum of h i hat d t i, where h i hat is the PBW quantization of the map h i, and you have to think that I do this for each fixed time t i, which lives in b. Okay, so for each n tuples of times. If I restrict HI to the set here, this is a map like this, and thus it's an element of the symmetric algebra to G, tensor power N. And this is what I am quantizing, okay? So you fix uh, one set of time, you have something in a symmetric algebra, you have this algebraic tool, you take the quantization. Okay, I write this connection, I have to tell you where this connection lives. So, Nabla hat is a connection 
on the vector bundle. Sorry, let me not call it a vector bundle. On a, on a bundle which has infinite rank, it's a bundle of non-commutative non algebras, which is this bundle here. Because now this is a one form on the base taking values in this algebra itself, and you can just let this element act on the fiber by left multiplication. Okay? So in particular, this is a form taking values in the endomorphisms of this bundle, and thus it's indeed it is a connection. Okay? And now the theorem is that this is the Knizhnik zamologic of connection, the universal Knizhnik zamologic of connection. Okay? And this was first seen, as far as I know, by Resha I think it was 1992. And there was also a paper of John Harnett, I think 1994, about this, uh, which said that this is the universal. Crazy connection. When should I stop? How, how much time do you give me to conclude so that I can... 29 minutes. minutes, good, okay. So we are all basically halfway. So, um, there are basically now we can consider generalizations of this program, but first I maybe should say something more about this result because why is this interesting, okay? I haven't told you why this KZ is important and so on. So, the idea is that <coughs> This, is, this should be surprising because the actual definition of the KC connection deals with some representational theory of infinite dimensional affine algebras and some coinvariant space to define this, which is the conformal block bundle, and the connection is obtained by uh, the action of one operator in the Virasoro algebra acting here. So, I mean, it's very complicated. So, this should be surprising because a straightforward quantization gives you the final output of some model in conformal field theory. Okay? So, basically, we recover the flat connection in the conformal block bundle. for the West Zumino Witten two-dimensional CFP model on sigma, okay? The point of this model is that they want to give you some quantum field theory in dimension two, so this is now my space uh, where I consider fields, so it, it has dimension two, so that makes sense, the Riemann surface. And this quantum theory is attached to this data plus punctures, plus some decoration at the punctures. And this connection is telling you, if I vary the position of the poles, how should I connect uh, the two Hilbert spaces of the theory? And the flat connection gives you the, the desired isomorphism, because if I now vary the poles, as if I have a path in the base, uh, then I can use parallel transport along the flat connection to obtain isomorphisms between the two theories. So this is what shows the fact that the choice of punctures is physically immaterial from the viewpoint of the physical theory. So that's why having flat connections of vector bundles is important in, in quantum field theory. Okay? And the actual uh, construction, again, it's, it's very more, I mean, it's much more difficult than what I just described. Okay? And now we can do more. Now we can consider more general isomorphism systems, try again for such an algebraic quantization, and see what comes out of it. And this is the generalization uh, th that I will talk about in the time. 
in the time that I have left. Let me just say, uh, as an aside, because maybe you also like to see some formulae, not just this uh, abstract stuff, so there's a little bit of computation. As an aside, there are explicit formulae for all that I'm talking about, uh, only that I have not much time, but HI, so the uh, Schlesinger Hamiltonian at the point I is written like this. Okay, so this is the explicit formula, which as you see depends on the space g to the power m as a polynomial of degree 2. And then one can show that h i hat, so if I do this QBW quantization, it becomes omega i j divided by ti minus i j, where this is the action of a certain truncated Casimir acting on ug to the power m, which unfortunately I, I erased. So this is some uh, uh, Lie algebraic tool which defines some operator acting on ug to the power n, okay? Where omega ij is the action of a certain uh, two tensor omega in ug uh, tensor ug on the i and j factor of ug to the power n. And this tensor is obtained by saying uh, the identity of the Lie algebra lives in g tensor g star, but uh, g star becomes g under the trace, and there you go, we have omega, okay? So it's just transforming, this is just a transform of the identity in the trace duality. And this is what gives you the universal physical action. Okay. And now for generalizations. Okay, so basically, um, now the generalizations, what the first one can think about uh, is, I don't know, very, very, there are basically, right, I would see three ways to generalize this. First, replace GLN by some other complex reductive group. I will not do that today. Second, increase the dimension of the curve and consider uh, modular spaces of connection on higher dimensional manifolds. I will either not do that today. Or you can make the genus go higher. I will not do that uh, again uh, today. This is not what I will do. What I will do is that I will still stay on the sphere with the same group, but they will now allow for irregular singularities. So coming to uh, the topic of this research project that we talked about, irregular connections, uh, or maybe connection on irregular algebraic curves. Anyhow, there is some irregular ingress in, the, in, in there, okay? So now, two, this is part two, now allow for higher order forms. And here again, I mean, you can imagine if I could give you whatever polar divisor, that would be a, a huge generalization of what I did. So there are a few steps to go into, and that's uh, what was done. So the first step could say, well, instead of just having simple poles, let's try to have a pole of order two. So I can do the following: consider nabla d minus t plus r over z dz, where z is as before, so I didn't change the group, so r is still in the Lie algebra, z is still a local coordinate on the sphere, and now t, uh, which is diagonal and regular. Regular means that it is in the regular part of the Catan algebra, it means that it has a simple spectrum, okay, I mean diagonal, whatever, with, with Simple spectrum. Okay, now I can do the same. I can say, okay, this is some neuromorphic connection on the sphere. I can consider its isomorphic deformations. Now, yes. So it's a point of infinity. Yes, exactly. This carries a pole of order to infinity. Sorry, yes, because you know, um, if W is Z to the minus one, and you transform. Uh, T dz becomes 
you know, minus t over w squared w, so this carries a pole of order 2 at infinity. It's just ch a change of variable. Sorry, so maybe let's, let's write this um, by taking w equals z minus 1, so which is a coordinate fixed now at infinity, etc. One sees that t carries a pole of order 2 at infinity. Or a singularity of one carré rank one. Uh, okay. Uh, so now, as I was saying, what can we move? Now the idea is that instead of moving the positions of the poles, of which there is only one, we vary the spectral type of t. So now we do not vary regular singularities, but irregular singularities. So I fix this, which is a diagonal matrix with simple eigenvalues. I move them in the space of configuration of n tuples of points in C. And I look for equations for R such that the monotony is fixed. And so this is what we do now. We move T. We move, I mean, we vary, okay? We move T inside H reg, which is like, uh, as I said, the regular part of the Kaltan algebra. The standard Kaltan algebra. So uh, this is just the same as the space of configurations of n tuples of point in C because n was the size of my matrices. Okay. Uh, I will still call it B, and now one has uh, sorry, one looks for uh, differential equations satisfied by R, uh, by the residue, so that the monodromy does not vary. Um, when I say monodromy, I am cheating. This is not the same monodromy as before, because now you have irregular singularities. So actually, I, I mean here, extended monodromy data are fixed, which are Stokes data, which is something which generalizes the representation of the fundamental group I introduced before, and I'm not going to try to introduce this today because it's just, uh, I mean, it's impossible, okay? Just think that there is some extended space parameterizing data that you can attach to such a connection, and it's not just enough to say our, tra our, our, um, our basis of fundamental solution transforms, around uh, the singularity, you also have to identify directions along which the fundamental solutions decreases um, as fast as possible. These are Stokes direction or anti-Stokes direction. Anyhow, I mean, there is some more data attached to this. Okay. Right, the result is another time-dependent Hamiltonian system HI. Now there is only one residue. And the quantization is uh, the quantization in the same sense of the PBW quantization. Yields another connection which is called the Casimir connection. Introduced by the Concini and then independently discovered by Nilsson and Toledano Laredo. So the Concini was unpublished, if I understand the story correctly. And then Nilsson and Toledano Laredo. Independent. So this is some irregular generalization of AZ. And again, it's obtained by a straightforward quantization of an isomonogramy system.
So the space of time before was the simple pose, and now the space of time is the uh, diagonal, this diagonal matrix here. One can show that there is a duality, swapping the two spaces of times, which is essentially Fourier Laplace transform applied to this rational differential operator. This is also known as Harnad duality, and you can indeed show that the integrable time-dependent system I described above is isomorphic to this one, this duality. So this is not totally new in a sense. Okay? This, is, this is irregular, but it can be brought back to an isomorphic problem for regular singularities. So let me just phrase this as this is the Harnad dual picture uh, of, uh, uh, of what I had before. Okay. Okay, then another generalization that has been considered. So here I took uh, one pole of order two and one simple pole. Can we do one pole of order two and several simple poles? Yes, we can. We consider nabla d minus t plus, and now I put again my sum of revenues. Notice that I am always on the trivial homomorphic vector bundle, okay? otherwise I couldn't give you such a global form. Okay? So now the space of times for the Hamiltonian system is B, which is both the space of variation of this inside the regular Catan algebra and this in the space of configurations of poles on SPL. So it's like a product. And still same story, okay? The isomonogamy. Let me write I and D for isomonogamy, okay? The I and D system is the uh, Jimbo, Miwa, Mori, and Sato system. This appeared, I think, in 81. So this is the period in which the Japanese school of isomonodromy made the revival of uh, the theory of isomonodromy after Schlesinger. The, basically, the, this branch, I'm just saying, this area, this research domain stayed silent for half a century, basically, and then they started to understand that it was possible to consider isomodromy deformation of, of something much more general than Fuchsian systems. And their intuition came again from quantum field theory. If you read the paper, there is something about those uh, condensates in here, in the way in which they derive the system, okay? So there is, again, some deep-rooted deep quantum field theory motivation for this. But I can just today talk about the isomodromy system for this combined problem of moving these spaces of times. Again, I quantize. <coughs> And the quantization yields another important connection, which is more recent. This is the dynamical connection. Of uh, Felder, Markov, Taras, and Varchenko. This was in 2000. which generalizes the two that I told you before, because if I now take t from 0 and back to kz, and if I take all these times to be 0, I am back to just one residue, just one pole at 0, and I'm back to uh, the Casimir convention. And again, here, you can use R duality to swap the two times. And finally, we come to, I mean, the, the, new, um, the new example. So, now I consider connections which are, again, a little bit more general than those, and which now allow for a pole of order 3 at infinity. So we consider uh, nabla d minus <coughs> this meromorphic valued g4. Okay? So, 
this you already know, there are two new ingredients, and in particular, this A times Z carries a pole of order 3 at infinity now, okay? So here, just to explain my notation, unless if you have questions, okay, so let me maybe start to explain what I mean by this. So here, uh, so uh, Nabla lives on the vector bundle call it U but this is not just a vector space, this is a vector space with decomposition so it's a graded vector space <coughs> with where u equal it's equal to the direct sum of certain vector space so it's graded over some finite set and um, t is going to be block diagonal with respect to this decomposition sorry let me say more precisely we have uh, k of them, some finite number, okay? I mean, k is an integer, so I have such block decomposition for t, whereas b is off diagonal. So b is composed of maps bij that maps all the possible off diagonal components to each other. So let me write it here, maybe. Okay, and then, uh, uh, I mean, A and all the Ri must live in GL of U. Uh, Ri has no uh, restrictions and A, 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 and A is diagonal. But not with simple spectrum. I can allow for repeated eigenvalues with respect to, to what I had before. Okay, so this is the new class of connection that we can now quantize this um, class of connection together with the uh, isomonogamy system was introduced by Bolge in 2012 and they are called the simply laced isomonogamy systems and the final statement is, is that again one can quantize the systems to obtain some new family of quantum if you want uh, flat connection generalizes all the previous ones okay so I said that now I'm now I'm going to write what I what I just said. So uh, theorem, this again is Bolch, 2012. So uh, uh, there exists. So there are there is a. Um, Strongly flat. Strongly is not important today. I mean, whatever. There's a strongly flat time dependent Hamiltonian system HI uh, controlling. Isomogromy deformations of this connection. So here B is the space of times, okay? So B is the space of what we can deform. What can we deform? We can deform the configurations of n tuples of points. This is the space containing deformation of simple poles. But now I can also move all these diagonal terms in such a way that in each subspace the eigenspace decomposition is fixed. So now I have a product of open subspaces into C to some power for each of these guys here. So I get product of uh, uh, C to the power ij minus all diagonals. 
So this is the same as uh, the configuration space of uh, this many tuples of points, and this ij is just the set of eigenvalues for the matrices dr. Okay. So it, there is a much bigger space of times, and uh, m here parameterizes all the other data. So parameterizes these components b i j, this of diagonal terms of the matrices b and the the rest. Of it. So again, you can give me isomorphic deformations equations by moving these times regular and irregular always with the polar border to infinity, and I will give you some uh, Hamiltonian system whose flows gives you the equation. And, uh, and, and finally, we can quantize it, and this is the, the statement to which I wanted to, to get. So, I, I mean, both um, in this paper, both showed more, okay? I didn't discuss today the reduction to the modular space of normalty connection, which was the, because there is no time, but this is also done. And moreover, there are symmetries of these spaces of this simply lazy asymptotic system, which generalizes the Arnold duality. So maybe let's say this: there is a global SL2C group of symmetries of the IMD systems. Generalizing uh, the hard duality. Basically, the hard duality becomes this matrix here into a certain signal. The Fourier Laplace transform, in a way, okay? This, I mean, multiplication becomes minus derivative and the opposite, or, I mean, one of the two conventions for the Fourier Laplace transform, okay? Okay, so this is the classical statement, and I conclude with this theorem. Uh, so this is, uh, I mean, it's on the archive, it's been submitted last October for publication, it's still there, I, I don't know, whatever. So it, you know, it, it's, uh, it's on the archive since last April, um, like 1704086, I think, anyhow. Uh, so the statement is that one can quantize This, which are I, didn't, I said I said that, but I didn't I didn't write it. These are the simply laced isomonodromy systems to obtain uh, a new family of again strongly. Flat connections, generalizing all the one that we've seen before. It generalizes so the KZ. It generalizes the connection of the continuum is on the other It generalizes Feder, Margot, and Marchenko, and moreover. There is a quantization of the symmetries, okay? And one can quantize the SL2C symmetry. So one can lift uh, the classical symmetry. And this is. Right. I think uh, we'll stop here. Thank you. Is there, is there any question? Well, the talk was difficult. I, I have uh, like two questions about the last part. One is, um, yes. so wh why is it called the simply laced? Uh, right. Thing? That, that, that's like, so if I had, uh, I don't know, another 20 minutes, I would try to explain <laughs> the proof. Yeah. And the proof, I would uh, explain this terminology. So the viewpoint is that you can attach 
these isomonogamy systems to certain quivers. That's the idea. And this is related to the, uh, you know, thinking graphs, the affine thinking graph for Pandeve and so on and so forth. So there is a class of complete k parted quivers, which are simply laced, plus some decoration to which I attach all this data. So I attach a base space of times, uh, some representation space of the quiver, which becomes symplectic, and a time dependent maintenance system. Uh, for example, if I take KZ, Schlesinger, right? Uh, you know that this is Pandeve 6 if I take four poles and rank 2. And, I mean, it is, I mean, like one can reduce this system to just one singular order 2 equation, which is Pandeve 6, okay? And in this case, uh, one gets a graph like this. So this is for Schlesinger. Which in my notation means taking a equal b equal t equal zero, right? I mean, I have to make many things vanish, and then I just have the other one part. And here I have one, two, three, up to m legs for the star, and this is the graph that appears there. For b and t, I have to take, uh, let's say, for f and t in general because this is a generalization of, of BMT, I have to take what is called a complete k parted graph, like this, for instance. I mean, this kind of quiver is what helps with two space of nodes separated in this case. And now for the slits in general, you can take any complete uh, k parted quiver. You know, let's say graph. So this generalizes this class. Uh, Sorry, one other question. For Yes. The A2 quiver, what, what does it, do you know what the system related to the A2 quiver? Uh, for just this, I mean, uh, right. So this would be not very interesting, I think. Because basically, the point is that you always start for, from a complete graph, okay. and then you play to say uh, how many. Uh, what is the dimension of, so what is the space of times that you are able to deform in this case, okay? So in this case, you're this basically... This is complete, not exactly. This is complete, exactly, but the point is that if there is no splay, you're basically saying that I have no possible deformations of times uh, in that component. Uh, so this is like, if you gave me this, then I can splay this to get to Schlesinger, but here it's like as you just gave me one simple pose and that's all. So okay. I have no deformations uh, to consider in that case. It's like, uh, I mean, uh, D minus R over Z, no parameter. Okay, so my last question is that, I mean, you, you did like a uh, function and you do first of the pawn, then second of the pawn. Yes. I mean, you cannot go on forever. Yes, I, yeah, yes. I think I, that's the, the no, last I, that's, yes, I, I can, uh, yes, I can say something about what's missing to go on, but maybe that's not your question. So, yeah. what is the question? So, I mean, is it possible to go farther? Okay, right, right. Or this is the last possibility, no, no. the second of the pawn. Right, right, right. No, so you're right, you're right. So, um, yes, so, uh, a priori, one could consider, uh, so the classical theory is already built. That's the point. So, what is known since a while is that if you give me any Riemann surface plus mark points, let, let's keep my TIs as in, uh, as in today's talk, plus irregular types at the, at the points, you should think of this as being the principal part. These are some um, objects parameterizing principal parts of neuromorphic connections at these points here. So if this is zero, I have simple poles, otherwise I have bigger stuff. So this is a wide Riemann surface. If you give me such an object plus a complex reductive group, let's say I fix sigma equal the sphere uh, for today, then I can consider the, the round moduli space. This is the moduli space of meromorphic connection on this curve, having poles there and only there, having local normal form isomorphic to d minus d to i plus lambda z dz plus holomorphic terms for this living in some uh, nice orbits, 
And this is defined, and it is a, a complex symplectic manifold. Uh, and the star here is just to recall us that we are on the holomorphic neutral vector bundle. So this is totally known. And, the re and moreover, as a very irregular type, so if I have a space of deformations of such Riemann surfaces, I get a vibration of these modular spaces onto the base space I'm considering. which is a symplectic vibration, so there is some symplectic from there, and it is endowed with um, a Harrisman connection, which is the isomonodromy connection. Okay, this again, I mean, this was uh, Philip's thesis, right? I mean, this is what was done uh, in the thesis in particular, defined uh, these modular spaces, and he defined the uh, irregular version of the uh, isomonodromy connection, which is like the wild, uh, gauss manning connection, I mean, whatever, there is some connection there. So now you can say, well, quantize this, right. But the problem is that I cannot just quantize asymplectic vibration with a connection, I can quantize symplectic vibration plus a Hamiltonian system. And I do not know what a Hamiltonian system is unless if this stuff is trivial. If you can write this as a product, if this becomes one fixed moduli space times b, as it was for all this talk, then I can say, good, now I move this, I have my differential equation that gives me something here, and I have my time dependent system, and I quantize it. So if I go further, it's not clear how to find preferred uh, trivialization of this, of this uh, space to, I mean, to get there, first. And second one, up to here, I have this graph theoretic description. Mainly, I can characterize this modular space here, being the an Akashima quiver variety, almost. Okay, it's like a, the complex sympathetic quotient of some representation space of a quiver. But if I go to higher singularities, in general, you cannot realize this as a quiver, uh, as the representation space of the quiver with some decoration up to up to some transformation. So, what uh, was used for this for this quantization used the quiver in an essential way. That's the point. So even if I add this, I do not know what to do for quantization. Thank you very much. <laughs> yeah,